Welcome back. The so-called mother's milk of politics is pouring into this year's election cycle like nobody's business. Well, we like to make it our business because campaign donations speak to candidates with a loud voice. NBC7's Wendy Fry and her guests are here to follow the money. Wendy. That's right, Gene. We all know that in campaigns, money talks. But just who is talking to who? With me to discuss this is iNews Source's Joe Girardi and political analyst John Dadian. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Certainly. So, Joe, let's just start with you. First off, right off the bat, what are some of the local races that we're seeing big dollars flow into? So, one of the most competitive races is going to be the first uh, district city council race. You've got one Democrat uh, in the form of Barbara Bree facing off against one Republican in the form of Ray Ellis. A lot of people are thinking that that could very well be the race that flips the council majority from 5-4 Democrat to 5-4 Republican. So that, that race, not just money going on here, but real big political beliefs flowing into it. Sure. Absolutely. Joe's yeah. correct that that is sort of the key race in the city of San Diego to watch. On the money side so far, they're pretty competitive. You know, a little bit of a difference, but pretty competitive. Here's one of the big political differences. Ray Ellis has run before in that particular district, so he's hoping that the, the name ID that he's had before and the support he got before, not only from the voters, but everything else, will carry him against Barbara. And, uh, Davian, a lot of these campaigns, you know, haven't really even gotten going so much yet. We haven't started seeing the ads and stuff like that. But, so what do these large campaign chests do for the candidate right now? Well, again, it's, uh, it does several things. And the first thing it does is try to scare out any potential opponents or your current opponent, et cetera. Clearly, that is the phase they've been into for the past six months. City of San Diego has a unique rule that you can't raise money until a year before. So they just started raising money this past June. Okay, and I want to talk about the supervisor's race, too. Uh, we had a, Joel Anderson dropping out, so he had huge money fundraising going on. What happens with that money, and how do they handle it from there? Well, it, it made big news because the County Republican Party made a quarter, uh, I believe it was $250,000 contribution to his right. campaign right. early on, right before new laws took effect that would effectively cap those contributions at 25000 from here on out. Um, that really supercharged his fundraising, gave him a good base. He eventually dropped out of the race, but by all accounts, he's going to be able to use that money um, in four years from now and have a big advantage over anyone else. So he might be the de facto supervisor in I think he will be. And the, the important political thing about that, why it raised so many eyebrows, is not only was that a large sum, sum of money, but it was the county Republican Party doing it against an incumbent Republican. And a lot of Republicans, the grassroots people, were very unhappy with that, without a doubt. So the supervisor races, that one now is not going to be as exciting as we thought. Uh, Supervisor Greg Cox is up for re-election. And again, now the county has term limits. So all these supervisors are going in their last term, but Greg Cox looks like he's unopposed. Right. And let's uh, switching gears a little bit. So talking, going on those endorsements, though, talking about that, uh, the city attorney's race really surprises Port Commissioner Rafael Castellanos way ahead in terms of the fundraising. What do you make of that? Well, sometimes what you see in this race is when you have four or five candidates, as we see in the city attorney's race, you have one or two gadflies. You don't see this in this race. The current candidates that are declared candidates are all credible. They all bring different constituencies, and they've all done pretty well on fundraising, some better than others. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. And especially if you look at the Democrats, it looks like what we've got is they're each trying to get um, certain different factions to endorse them, different inter interest groups. They're all staying pretty competitive. Is it a given that we'll have a Republican and a Democrat in the uh, runoff there? That's the conventional wisdom, and I go by, I'm from the old school, I don't give anything as a given. Uh, because, again, at least two of the Democrats, uh, uh, Cabrera and uh, Castellanos, are very credible and very possibly, if the Democrats do right, they could get two into the general. So you look into these campaign finance races all the time, you kind of study it. Anything interesting about where the money is coming from quite yet, or is it mostly individuals so far? Well, so far as individual, the city of San Diego actually, um, if I recall, prohibits any contributions to actual candidate campaigns who, not from um, not from actual uh, individuals, I believe. Almost all of our local races, the county supervisor and the city council and many of our incorporated seats make it personal checks only. So. Yeah, so, so far that's capped the amount of money coming into the campaigns themselves, but we haven't quite gotten to the point for most races where any sort of the big third party groups are going to be spending money on their own, but that should probably happen uh, in a little bit. Yeah, so we're starting to get where we're going to start seeing the independent expenditures coming through, or how, when do you expect that to happen? Uh, very, very soon, because basically uh, next month is when the filing opens, and then of course we've got a June race uh, that for the nonpartisan races they could win it in June. Here's something not to confuse. As far as different with independent expenditures, 
those are separate, but you still have the two parties. And what the parties can do is what they call member communication. So if it is, even in a nonpartisan race, if it is a Republican against a Democrat, the parties may get involved. Okay, so that, that means that the endorsement matters, if, uh, who the party's endorsing. So where are we at as far as Democrat Party, Republican Party, and the endorsements in some of the more competitive races? Again, in District 1, you do have just two candidates, and you have Republican against a Democrat. It's a city attorney race that is a dicey one because you've got several Democrats and so far only one Republican. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, certain races, I think we've seen District 3. Um, we've got two Democrats trying to succeed. Todd Gloria, for example, I don't think you'd necessarily um, see one of those guys getting the endorsement of the official party. Okay, we're on the clock. Last thing, I just want to talk about that um, supervisor District 1 race, Dave Roberts, and Encinitas Mayor Christian Gasper, where's that at? Actually, that's Supervisor District 3 race. Okay. And so there's, there's uh, the incumbent uh, Democrat supervisor, first Democrat in 20 years to be on the Board of Supervisors, but he's running against two Republicans, and they both have done very well on fundraising, pretty much very close. Even Sam Abed is actually ahead of the incumbent supervisor. So that one, we don't know what's going to happen. That, that, that one's a roll of the dice. We're really going to have to keep a close eye on that one. Yeah, that's right. And the Republicans think that maybe the next time that South County um, seat comes up, that the Democrats might have a good shot at taking that. So they would really love to get Dave Roberts' seat back into the Republican column this year. All right. We're going to have to end it there and circle back to this at another time. Gene, we're going to go ahead and send it back to you. And in the home stretch of Politically Speaking, a sad state of affairs in Balboa Park. Decades of wear, tear, and blight left untended. Soon to be exposed in a shaming campaign. Stay with us.